Loudmouth. Loudmouth colonial nymphomaniac. How dare they call me a loudmouth? <laughs> Some of you weren't taking that very seriously. The McConnell Show, next. Kelly ho bargain hunters, just off on another Safeway safari to hunt for those jumbo-sized bargains. So if you're a bargain hunter, come and join me for this week's Safeway specials. And there are plenty more jumbo-sized bargains you can buy this week when you shop and save at Safeway. For gold. Oh, there you go. Head on. Okay. Is there anything you can't do? No, I've changed it into an adult Christ. tonight. <laughs> you look like you're going to court. I think I. <laughs> That's a going to court suit, Hesse, if ever I've seen one. Oh, look, hanging out with you, son. <laughs> that happens like that. Welcome aboard. Let's you meet. Should start behaving like adults. <laughs> There you, you go. thought about that? <laughs> well, I just proved myself. I don't know what you're doing, young man. Hey! Hey, hey. The show is not 30 seconds old and you two are at it again. <laughs> it's going to be big smacks for someone after the show. OK, I'll settle. I've been watching other channels and I'm a bit thrown. Oh, OK. Good for you. <laughs> Good team player, isn't he? <laughs> Crikey. Bob's on board. How are you, Bob? Oh, very well, thanks. That's Mickey. the way. And hello. Who's this? It's Big Dave. How are you? Jumping in again, let's get straight into it. There's been some big stories this week. My favourite is the hoo-ha about removing the Queen's head oh, from yeah. the coin. Oh, should it go? Shotgun. Should it stay? Do we need the Don? Off with her head. <laughs> Off with her head. I've been having a think about it. And for mine, there's only one Australian uh, we should put on the coin. Who's that? Bert Newton. <laughs> Why is that? No, I've, got, I've got the new coin right here. There's, there's a $2. There's Bert's head on the back. Because oh. <laughs> Bert has a big head. <laughs> we went to a lot of trouble is that to make, make that. Is it made out of chocolate? Or? <laughs> get your beady eyes off it. I'm keeping that. If they're going to get rid of the Queen, surely we can put an Australian Queen on the coin, like John Michael Housen. <laughs> well, I, that'll get back. <laughs> that one's in a lot of trouble. The rest I of the... I say if, uh, if Don Bradman replaces the Queen mm. on coins, then at least let the Queen open the batting for Australia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fair enough. It's only fair, Bob. Fair enough. It's only fair. And on that note, that leads us into sport and what a huge week it's been for sport. Oh, we've got the athletics in Spain and that's going nuts. Yep. Shervington. Sherbo. Shervington. Broke twice. In fact, have a look at this picture. Um, oh, hello. I think it was his tackle that broke. <laughs> he's a complete sprinter. He's a complete package. He, he is. He won't get that on the plane back from Spain. His hand, I guess. <laughs> Will he? I don't think I got caught going through Spain with that once. <laughs> but look at him. That's he, Can we see that again? Because he's disappointed. Imagine if he'd won. <laughs> I hate to see him excited. Is he, is he, is he running the relay? Uh, well, I hope uh, not. I, I'd hate to be the guy right in front of him. He's in for a rude shock. Yeah. <laughs> Oi! Have we got all the tackle jokes oh, out of the we system? Are. We, yeah, that's all. I think we're done. Think we can move on. The other. Oh, actually, I actually was partially responsible for what? him breaking twice. And you know what? I don't think I'll ever be asked back as a starter again. Why not? Oh, they just can't take a joke. No, really? I was just marking around. Have a look at the footage. What, what do you think? Ready, steady, spaghetti! <laughs> <laughs> just mucking around. Here's the second one. Ready, steady, what a cigarette! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, just mucking around, fellas. Just mucking around. What else are you going to do? Hey, and the other big one, and we saw it all on TV earlier tonight, is the swimming. And Thorpey, the Thorpedo, he's bagged he's three. Great. He's bagged three gold medals, Thorpey. which is the equivalent to one of these. <laughs> <laughs> they should just give him one of those. Hey, is this true? Can you tell me, have you heard this? Has he got, is his feet size 17? Someone <laughs> says... No, size... Oh, yes, yeah, yes. size 17. Size 17. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Did you see him on the podium? No. He was hanging 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's big fee. He's going out shopping for clown shoes, that boy. <laughs> That's as big as they get. And, and what's this about the fast pool? Have you heard this? Everyone's going, yeah, the it's fast a fast pool. pool. Fast pool. It's what is it? Fast water? What, what's the deal? Fast. I don't know. But you break a record and get a colonic at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a happy winner. I don't, know. I, I don't follow the sports, <laughs> Michael. You don't follow much at all, Hesse. No, I've, I've got a life of my own to lead. You me. have indeed. <laughs> have you seen the actual Olympic pool? No, is it big? It's all right. Is it above ground? Yeah. <laughs> is my dad cleaning with one of those things in his jocks? Or, uh... No, but that'd be a good look. You know what I thought? They missed out. It was a good opportunity. A pool bar. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every <laughs> Olympic <laughs> Games needs a pool bar. You're swimming along, you hit the 400 mark. Ah, I might take a stool and chat to some ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Finish this a little later. Mm. Okay. Anyhow. Hey, and the other big sporting news before we plow on is... Uh, can we have a look at the footage? The MCG last night. Isn't oh, ironic? Fire. The smoke free Could go oh, yeah. there, we have there it goes. Potentially Someone's on the bong in the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, I was having a look at that, really and you know what I reckon it is? into the night now. I this reckon that that is Jeff Kennett's bid to, to host the, the uh, opening ceremony of the Olympics. <laughs> he's going, <laughs> going, look, we've already got the flag. <laughs> I, I, reckon, I reckon Lou Richards was smoking in bed again. <laughs> you, know, you know, he lives up there, you know that, don't you? Know? He's, he's like the phantom of the MCG. <laughs> he's up there. Playing his little orb. Yeah. Oh, that's great news. And look, let's move on to entertainment because there's some other big news. Did you know this, Dave? What? that Ricky Martin has Rick just signed up to do a Pepsi ad. Has he? You haven't heard? I haven't heard that at all. I Ricky thought, Martin? I thought you must have known for he's, sure. He's a big hero of mine. I know he is. He, in didn't, fact, he didn't call, he didn't <laughs> ring, no. he didn't... Right? Well, I've actually got a, a, an exclusive sneak preview of, uh, oh. of his new Pepsi ad. Can, Check it out. Can we see this? Hi, drink Pepsi all day, all day, all day. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking good, man. <laughs> God, <laughs> gotta say, he's <laughs> the Pepsi hasn't affected his weight at all. No, no. It's... That guy could dance, couldn't he? That's a five million bucks that cost, apparently. <laughs> they're they're going to show that at my funeral. I know it. Anyway, interesting interesting, accent, as well. interesting accent as well. Interesting accent. Interesting accent. Hey, now look, uh, we're not into kicking anyone while they're down, and there's a bit of sad news this week. Uh, John and Noni from Better Homes and Gardens have, uh, have split. Uh, they're going to be yeah. going their separate ways. And... <laughs> That's rock my world. Oh, no. It's all right, Hesse. We'll, we'll, we'll move on. What about play school? What about play school? <laughs> Let it go. But I was wondering if it was going to affect their show at all, and I was flipping through the TV guide. Oh, you have you ever a look at this? This, no. is, this is at the reading. That's it. John shows how to change the locks. While Nani looks for a real estate agent. That's no. <laughs> oh. Well, we'll th think of the good side, Nick. At least I can go on changing rooms now. <laughs> yes. You got that right. Hey, and uh, the other one, the big one, is All Star Squares. All Star oh, Squares. Yes. It's gone, Dave. Can you it's believe gone? it's gone? I can't. It's been ruthlessly culled from the TV lineup at Channel 7. There's no reason to get out of bed anymore, man. <laughs> is that the time you get out of bed, well, is it? Well, it's a bit late, actually. <laughs> but uh, I reckon this is a great opportunity for you to uh, bring back your pilot that you made. Oh, don't go into my pilot. We've... Oh, Mick, I thought it was good. Mick, don't mate. Know. A celebrity sort of squares type pilot. Can you believe this? Ah, look. Another pilot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like showing bits of my pilot on this program. <laughs> tends to go wrong. But, oh, uh, look, here's one well, I made. Just yeah, go on. Welcome to Celebrity Cardboard Squares. I'm your host, Mick Malloy. <laughs> yeah, righto. And there's our celebrities. Hello, Toddy, how are you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty uncomfortable, actually, you know? I think I've got a paper cut. All right, all right. Stop your whinging. We gave you the centre square. Jeez. OK, first question. Pete, how do you think the show is going? Great. <laughs> Incorrect. The answer we were looking for was shithouse. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be back after the break. <laughs> no, we won't.
much time had been spent mm. making my podium, I reckon. <laughs> hey, uh, let's, uh, that's enough of our hoo-ha. Let's get into, uh, well, the band. We've got Jeb and I on, and we've got their new single, uh, which is called Animal. And it's uh, the new album. It's not out yet, boys, is it? The actual album. Uh, but uh, stand by for it. We've got some tour dates here. Let's whop them up. There oh, you go. The Coming girl. soon. Oh, big bloody tour. And <laughs> <laughs> That's from Mr. Rock and Roll over you here. You lazy bastards. Yeah. <laughs> the young kids, they don't know the work ethic today, <laughs> Hesse. I thought I had a CD cover here, but I don't. I'll show it later. Go nuts, Jebediah! <laughs> i 
know, as promised, we're still trying to hook up with Judith Lucy in Edinburgh. We're not sure if uh, <laughs> she's uh, uh, with us or we just can't reach her. But we'll go to plan B, which is as good or better. Um, it's our sporting show, Bob. It's a big sporting show this week. And you know the World, uh, the world Golf Championships are on at the moment. And I thought this, uh, in the current climate, with this great crop of new players, would be a perfect opportunity for me to launch my new golf video. Ideal. It's an instructional video. <laughs> I knew you'd see it my way, Bob. And uh, it's got to be out in the shop soon, so here's a little preview, just to whip the appetite. I'm Mick Malloy, and as you can see, I've played a fair bit of golf in my time. Together with my coach, Alan Length, I'm going to show you, through my new sports instructional video, how to win at golf every time. Alrighty, let's get into it. Excuse me, Mick, I need the 1969 match ball. <laughs> from any other game, the philosophies of golf are so layer upon layer upon layer, it's, it's, it's got to be a nexus between the physical and the mental conditioning. If you're not right on the day, you're not right on the day. And you're not going to play better golf. That's great, mate, but um, I'm paying you 12 bucks an hour. Just give me the club, will you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jeez. That would be an arsehole. <laughs> now, Alan here, like a lot of golfers, likes to play around in a golf cart. Takes the stress off his legs, and that's great. But personally, I find him a little poofy. Which is why I prefer to use one of these. It's a monster truck car. Great fun. <laughs> Watch out, Alan. I'm going to crush you like an egg. <laughs> now, putting is probably the most important part of the game of golf. You drive for show, you putt for dough. That's why when a player steps over the ball and starts to concentrate, you've got to try and put them off. Watch Alan as he demonstrates. <laughs> see what he did? Alan's pretty happy right now, but let's see if we can turn the tables. <laughs> you learn anything there, Bob? <laughs> oh. That video will take eight strokes off your game. <laughs> that doesn't sound like hotcakes. I don't know much about <laughs> golf videos. No, no, maybe not. Um, Bob, you've joined us on the couch. I feel obliged to ask, how's your week been? Uh, went bushwalking, me. Really? Mm. How was that? Well, it started well, but um, about an hour down the track, mm. I, uh, I got a berry in my shoe. Uh, maybe, maybe the boots were just too big, I don't know. Yeah, or maybe you were too big for your boots. <laughs> no, I think it was definitely the other way around. <laughs> anyway, it was quite a hard berry, yeah. quite a hard berry, sure. and uh, it was pretty uncomfortable, and I couldn't carry on. I had to sit down on the path and send someone back for help. Mm. Uh, why didn't you just take off your shoe and remove the berry? Well, that's easy to say in hindsight, Mick, but uh, <laughs> I'm not an experienced bushwalker. Mm. <laughs> Seems the only thing you are experienced at, Bob, is making a fool of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, mm. whether you're bushwalking or going for a job interview, correct footwear is very important. Mm. But isn't it time now, Bob, for a job? <laughs> For a journey of a very different kind. Yes, indeed, Mick. It's time once again to take a journey through Bob's scrapbook. <laughs> Sarah, there's something that I want to talk to you about, but I sort of don't know if I know you well enough to actually talk about it. It's um. What is it? It's something that means quite a lot to me, and it's something that I'd sort of like to share with you. Go on. I've been collecting cardboard for quite a few years now. 
so perhaps I should show you my 1981 cornflakes box. You've got an 81 cornflakes box? Oh, Sarah, that's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just talking about cardboard? Yeah. I collect cardboard. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll bring your drink over. Come over. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it just so happens I have just come into contact with one of the oldest pieces of corrugated cardboard ever produced in this country. Did you say corrugated? I think you better leave, mate. <laughs> just go. Excuse me, are these all the soccer boots you have left? Um, I think so. Right, you don't have any more out the storeroom? Uh, I don't know, footwear's not my department. Uh, is there someone around here who might know? Uh, yeah, Greg would know, footwear's his department. Is he around? Yeah, yeah, he's around today. Which one is he? Um, that one over there. Do you want me to call him over? Yes. Hey, Greg. What's up? Um, do we have any more soccer boots left? What are you after? Puma Achilles. Achilles wide? Uh, no, just the standard Achilles, but last year's model. Last year's model is the same as this year's model? No, it's not. I've tried this year's model. I'm a size 8. I tried the size 7 and it was too big for me, so... What about a 6? Uh, that's actually too small. Tried the Achilles wide? Yes, and they're too big as well. That's why I wanted last year's model. I don't find last year's model anywhere in the country, mate. Well, what about, um, you and Shadow? Have you got any... The only thing we've got, mate, is on the shelves. Right, so which of these models would be the most like the, uh, the Achilles? Um, so you reckon I should just try some on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Scheduled, <laughs> but it fitted the bill nonetheless. Arch, are we going to a break? Got We're a break. still going to try and get Jed and Tony from Edinburgh sometime soon. Don't go away. On you, Bobby. The other thing, of course, to remember is ball position. This is of paramount importance. And my motto on this is, it's wherever you want it to be. <laughs> <Hold inside. laughs> oh, there it is. Fine if you can get away with it, but sometimes you're playing with a group of, let's call them assholes, who don't like that kind of stuff. All right, here's what you do. Say this is a staked tree. I have relief in any direction, no closer to the hole, two club links. One of these. Not me. That's where I like to pull out the 12 iron. Alan? Thanks, mate. No closer to the hole. Two club links. <laughs> oh, I can see the pin. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Mm. You're not writing it down, Bob. It'll go in one ear, out the other. If you don't write it down. Something for everyone there. <laughs> I think there is. 
Are we ready to go, Arch? Is our satellite in position? Let's give it a burl. Judith Lucy, are you there? I am Mick Malloy. <laughs> against my will. <laughs> hey, on, on that note, can I just ask at this point, Judith, how have you enjoyed your stay? Mick, I'm going to warn you now that I am now at the point where I am so depressed and so pissed off to be here that I actually turned to Tony Martin last night and said, I've now even lost all interest in my physical appearance and personal hygiene. I, I don't think I've washed for days. But... Now, you could be wondering why we have a bear in the background there, and yep. that's because it was pointed out to me that apparently Greg Fleet has been doing live crosses for O'Loughlin mm. and using the same backdrop. So I just wanted to make it very clear that we're making more of an effort than that. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that the bear was an unusual choice, but, you know, it was either that or the tennis girl scratching her naked ass, and <laughs> I'm trying to put that period of my life behind me. Fair enough. Now, I am actually thinking of staying because there are so many Australians over here that I actually thought I'd try and get a television program up where I get Australians on to comment on Scottish food, the cost of living and the weather, and it's simply going to be called This Is Shit House. <laughs> And I have to say, because Exhibit A is coming up, if anyone's watching with small children, can you please turn the television off for a moment because this really is quite disturbing. Tony Martin, can you assist me oh, here? This is apparently food. Let's have a look at this. What the hell's that? Now, <coughs> I don't know if you can make that out at all. Mm. It's supposedly a shrimp pasta salad with sweet corn on a potato. <laughs> Ironically enough, <laughs> bought it from a shop called Tempting Tarties. Tempting in the only way that I can imagine, so, you know, occasionally leukaemia might seem appealing. <laughs> it actually looks, I don't know if you could make it out, but it looks a bit like the result of, I don't know, a, a plate of macaroni cheese, you know, having sex with a hemorrhoid might look. <laughs> and, I actually thought, no, Jude, maybe you're being a little unfair. Maybe you should give it a taste. I've never tasted a bowl full of tin prawns past their use-by date mixed with phlegm, but I'm imagining that's what they would taste like. Yep. The, um, I think you can tell I'm ready to come home. The potato has been in the oven so long, it was clearly wrenched from the hand of Cro-Magnon Man. I actually took a potato home the other night. I had a metal knife and fork. The fork was bent from me trying to cut the potato. I walked past a cafe the other day called Good Food, and I quite simply laughed out loud. <laughs> I just thought even the best restaurants I've been to over here should be called wildly overpriced, barely edible, let's take vegetables and boil them till they resemble paper mache food. <laughs> I, the other day, and you shouldn't do the conversion thing because it just makes you want to cry, but I paid 50 Australian dollars for a piece of steak that was so small, I thought, well, they're now clearly getting beef from hamster embryos. <laughs> but, <clears throat> look, the television's fantastic. I'm not making this up. Uh. I actually watched a program the other night. It's on every week. It's an hour and a half, and it's called Live Poker. And that's what it is. If you can imagine your father and a couple of his buddies sitting around playing Go Fish and then going, hey, I think we've got a television show here, that's what it's like. I would rather watch an hour and a half documenting wax build-up in someone's ear. But then again, it's not a patch on Naked Elvis which is a game show that's fairly unremarkable, apart from the fact that halfway through the show, a man simply gets up and for no apparent reason takes all his clothes off, and I mean all his clothes off, and then just spends the rest of the show striking a pose. It's no puppetry of the penis, I'll tell you that. Absolutely not. And, um, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, it's a game show. Aren't people satisfied with the gift shop anymore? <laughs> I'm sure no one's ever turned to Glen Ridge and said, well, look, sale of the century isn't firing quite like it used to, and we think the answer is an anonymous man's dick. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But oh, the quaintness of Edinburgh itself. The castle, the cobble streets, and everywhere you turn, vomit and urine. Vomit and urine in the streets everywhere. These people don't go to the toilet, they just go to the pavement. <laughs> Look, I was once nauseous in a taxi, and even I had the decency to throw up in my own sleeve. What are these people thinking? It's a bit low, Brown G. And finally, <laughs> I know, finally, there was a review, uh, a, a, quite a nice review of, of the show, but it referred to Australia as being full of mental defectives. <laughs> and I thought, geez, you know, anyone would think someone like John Howard was our Prime Minister. <laughs> oh. Anyway, the whole thing's a complete mystery to me. Oh, my What's God. It's Jonathan Crete. <laughs> oh, what? That's Alan Davies. If I, yeah. Unless I'm correct. Alan, uh -huh. how are you, buddy? Hang on. No, Mick, sorry, I can't sit down yet. <laughs> <laughs> Jude's had to run sack a hospital next door so she can get in camera shot. How are you, Alan? What's happening? Oh, you're so distant. I know. I've got the window down. Move open. the potato away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. It's toxic. Get it downwind. Get uh, it away. The other side of the air conditioning. Uh, Alan, have you actually been performing uh, at the festival? No, no paid events. Though some of the stuff I've been doing, people think has been a bit of a performance. <laughs> you, you want to talk us through? Oh, there you are. Oh, now I can hear you. Hello. Oh, I can hear myself. There you go. It's going like a oh, dream, Australia. isn't it? <laughs> I think we're I'm on one of the... Three Australians is... To... <laughs> See, we're on one All of those... I can hear, uh, we're... to spend two days with them, and they just keep telling me how terrible the food is, so I take them out to the finest seafood restaurant in Scotland, and they all order steak. I said, you want three stubbies as well? What's the matter with you? <laughs> Here's a monkfish with a bit of a lime sauce in it. Ah, oh, the food, you know. <laughs> uh, I think they're both ready to come home, Alan. Yeah, well, I'm sending them home. All right, Western. and when are we going to see Is you back right? out in Australia, sir? Oh, no, I'm not allowed back. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't related to anything you did last time you were out here, I hope. No, I'm going to come back next year, I hope. I'm busy at the moment, we're filming. I had two days off and I came up here for a break. Now, look at me. Look, I can't see the camera, actually. <laughs> and what are you filming, Alan? Is, is this another series of uh, Jonathan Creek? <laughs> yeah, Jonathan Creek. Do you like it? Have you seen it? I, I love it. It's the, the idea of a uh, murder you mystery investigation a handled by a magician. <laughs> oh, is... oh, oh, I love it. You went. <laughs> it's never ending. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> All right, Alan, look, I'm going to have to wrap it up at this end because uh, Arch is giving me the wind. Could you please make sure... back to the sure... swimming. <laughs> That's right, we've got some swimming on here. Can you make sure you send them home in one piece? We need them. And keep Tony Martin there because I want to speak to him as soon as we get back from the break. OK. All right, thanks. <laughs> I hope you were writing that down, Alan. Thanks for dropping by. And when you're in Australia, we want to get you on the show live. Um, is that it, Arch? We've got to go. Break, back in one second. Oh. Cheers. We're going back to Edinburgh to check in with one Tony Martin. Tony, come in! Uh, yes, uh, Mick, I'm not well. Uh, as you can hear, I've, uh, I've contracted a terrible Scottish accent while I've been here. <laughs> I've, uh, I've been to a couple of specialists and they've described it as totally spurious and a tad gratuitous, but uh, I've just been sitting at home eating neeps and tatties and watching repeats and target. <laughs> it's great because you can just say anything you want, you know. I went up to a woman in the street and said, you've got a face like a pound sign. That's apparently something you can get away with. You can just say anything you want, you know. Oh, look, that bloke's got pants like a coal scuttle. You say whatever you want, but uh, nonetheless, I have it. I have found time to get out and shoot some crap for your programme. <laughs> and, uh, I got down to the got down to the Royal Mile and uh, did a couple of things that are quite traditional if you're here in Edinburgh. I put on a stupid costume, made a dick of myself, <laughs> and uh, also went down to the uh, the birthplace of uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, the famous uh, novelist and twat from the previous century, and uh, tried to get in, but. Uh, 
Wasn't it too successful? Uh, we got some footage. Take a look. <laughs> you know, they don't let many people into this joint, but I reckon this should let them know just how serious I really am. Let's go, Root. <laughs> Open up, Mr. Stevenson, or any of your descendants. We know you're in there. <laughs> come on, we're very big fans. Hello, we're very big fans of Robert Le Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, come on. I'm a big fan of all his books. Treasure Island, Kidnapped, The Fourth Protocol, <laughs> The Little Book of Pirate Calm. What's the worst you've seen in all your days here? Uh, alcohol abuse. Oh no, not here in Edinburgh. Yes, indeed. <laughs> not the locals, surely. No, not the locals. Australians? Among them, yes. How many buckets of sawdust have you gone through today? Uh, we've just got this council onto it. We can't carry that many buckets. <laughs> I see. You need to send a crop duster in. <laughs> now, what have you seen in the way of street theatre? Well, a very fat man just behind us here. A very fat get a, man? A very fat it man. It must be near the end of the festival. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> you see that, Rue? More victims of Scottish cooking. <laughs> well, as you can see, the lone bagpiper is attracting absolutely nobody. What he needs is a gimmick. I'm thinking a dancing pirate. Here's a suggestion if you want to do a bit better. Throw in a couple of Ricky Martin numbers. I, I, I don't know what you're going to see. Living La Vida Loca? Can uh, you do that on the pipes? Not really, no. You're getting stirred because you're in costume? Getting stirred? Yeah, I am. <laughs> oh, people have been calling me a pirate nerd. <laughs> it's cruel and unfair. Maybe that's because you're dressed as a pirate. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Look out! It's a police lineup of some description. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Tony Martin. You are officially mad. Jude, looking forward to seeing you home soon. Rooster, you're an idiot. <laughs> Alan Davies. It's our good friend, Marty. Who's Marty? <laughs> hello, Marty. How are you? Come home. One Say hello all. to Cole, Marty. All right. Hi, Collie. <laughs> oh, all right. We're, hey, this is an we're abuse of satellite microscope. time. We're only 15 microscopic parmesanas away from Australia. We'll see you soon. <laughs> all right. Good on you, guys. Thank them all very much. Come home safely. We need them. All right, guys. That officially draws the Edinburgh leg of their tour to conclusion. And I believe this segment... No, it's not. What are we doing at? Oh, have we got time? Can I do it? More, more of my beautiful golf video. Yeah, yeah come oh, yeah. on, let's go. This is. Get your pens and papers out. This is important. This one. <laughs> have a look. Now, the only other part of the swing we need to address is the follow-through. Now, most people do this. They get to the top of their back swing, they release, play through, and they finish there. That's a mistake. Here's what I like to do. I get to the top of my back swing, I release, and then I really. Release. <laughs> That's one school of thought. The other is to get to the top of your backswing, release, look at the shot, and then just snap. <laughs> <laughs> now that's enough to get you around the golf course, but what about that one special shot? That one that really meant something? That one you really had to nail that you've missed? What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? This is what you do. You address the ball, you at the top of your backswing, you release, and then you do one with a lot. You hurl that one like that, you pull one out of like that, and then you grab your pants and you... <laughs> That's just do it. I 
should have mentioned the grip. The grip's the important. The grip's important, yeah. too. There's, there's so much to think about. Oh. It's such a mental game. <laughs> Dave, you've joined us. What's going on? Not much there, Mick, really. Oh, but, wakey, wakey. Uh... <laughs> No, you know, uh, I, uh, a couple of weeks ago I put on the uh, security guard uniform to test out the theory. Oh. Is, uh, is, uh, does wearing a uniform, uh, you know, people respect authority, that sort of thing. Mm. And uh, basically it's become my very own con the fruiterer. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to milk that sucker until it's dead. Okay. I won't be happy until I'm doing uh, chook manure commercials and opening shopping centres. But uh, <laughs> last time I was in here... It's not far away. <laughs> <laughs> You've been uh, following my career, Bobby. I've I, actually uh, got your diary here, Dave. <laughs> and I think it's penciled in for Tuesday. No, no, that's a primary school opening. That's a fate. Uh, but uh, this time I went into the heartland of the Melbourne CBD and uh, just to see how they handle a bit of security. Okay, let's take a look. Mm. Oh, can you uh, can you leave the keys in it possibly? Just that I've uh, I've got to go down the shop and get some stuff. <laughs> Cigarettes, that sort of thing. I need a car. You're not getting my car. Not your car. Could you, uh, fellas, did you uh, wash your hands down there? Hi. Wash your hands, do the wash. Yeah, I did. You did? That's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you didn't eat the yellow lollies. Hi. You didn't eat those yellow lollies, <laughs> did you? <laughs> now, mate, do you realize your, uh, your car's got two horses attached to the front of it? What? Yeah. Okay, everyone put up their hand if they're waiting for a tram. Because this is a tram stop, you'll be disappointed if you're waiting for anything else. <laughs> and look, it's a tram. It's all going to plan. <laughs> now we've got the yellow one and the red one. <laughs> Germany. Yeah. Germany, you just give that to me. I'm going there in a month. <laughs> for the post a, a kangaroo on a bike. Good Lord. Uh, the eating of lunch in this area is now prohibited. Uh, put the sandwich down, please. <laughs> please stop. Please. Stop. Thank you. Stop. Please stop playing the bad pipe. Very annoying. Stop playing. Right, yeah, that's enough of that sort of business. Thanks very much. Just have to step down for a minute, sir. Jug juggling's an offence. Juggling is an offence. Madam, you, uh, you parking your car up there? Fair enough. No one loses to security these days. Where's that uh, ticket get, get you to? Where do you get, get with this ticket? It's mine. Where's it come from? Windsor. Windsor? Oh, that's where I'm going. That'll be, that'll be great for me. Thanks very much. <laughs> that's wonderful. I'll, I know how you're going to get home, mate. Thanks very much. I've got to go. <laughs> I'm with security. You got an ID there for us? I've only got this, my badge. No, I want to a security industry license. Security industry license? Do you work in the industry or something? I do. Oh, really? Okay. Just keep moving then, thanks. <laughs> thanks, mate. No, Coca-Cola? Uh, sorry? <laughs> what? Hold on. Hang on, I just want to check the drink. Any reason? That's fine, mate. Not a problem. Move along. Nothing, sweet. <laughs> oh, oh, I, sh okay. I shouted him a dream. You know what I like? You're firm but fair. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. All right. Thanks for that. Hey. Are you going to do that again? Would you do that again? I, I love it every oh, time. I reckon I should. <laughs> All right. We'll get to work on that this week. We're going to a break. And when we come back, we've got Mark Thompson with us, who's Australia's barbecue king. Hang about. Yeah. Are you still struggling with your game, Dave? Yeah, the golf. The golf. the golf. The golf. Yeah, yeah have struggling. a look, Brad. Look oh, and okay. learn. Look and learn. <laughs> All right. The next thing we have to do is address the ball. Now, stance and posture are everything. So you must get comfortable over the ball. Here's a training drill I like to do. I like to pretend I'm on a bar stool. In fact, I've got one here. This is a great exercise. Because one minute you're over the golf ball, but the next minute you're kind of sitting on a bar stool. And that takes you somewhere else. It takes you to a bar where maybe you're ordering a drink 
and enjoying it and waving to the girls over in the corner. And hang on a second, someone's causing trouble. Are you having a go at me, mate? <laughs> yeah? Sorry, can't hear ya. Gone on quiet, have we? <laughs> and then I'm back on the stool. I'm back over the golf course. I'm happy. Here, Alan, get in here. We must get him comfortable. So sit on the stool, relax. I'm not going to kick it out from under you. Address the ball and... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Stan, you've got to sit over the ball. You've I've got to been relax that... over the ball, Dave. I've been to that hotel many a time, eh? <laughs> yeah, indeed. It's a metaphorical journey, mm. isn't it? <laughs> hey, uh, look out. Here's a bloke who well, spent a bit of time with during the week. Make him welcome. It's Mark Thompson. In case you don't know, has uh, just written this sensational book called Meat, Metal and Fire. Can we get a close up? And Mark is such a devotee of barbecues. He was actually seen at the MCG last night with a, no, no, with no, a no, stand no, on the no, board. No, I was, I, I was, up at the scoreboard going, oh, <laughs> pinch me, I'm in heaven. Didn't start it, didn't start it. You didn't start it. Mark, what, let's talk briefly about barbecues. When sure. was the first barbecue? Um, I can't recall. But it's um, before your time. Before the wheel. Before the wheel. Before the wheel. Yeah. But not, not long before, after the cave. Not long. Not before fire. In That's fact, true. That's there's true. many people who. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, a, it's a quite an intellectual program. <laughs> <laughs> See if you can hang in there with us. Sure. Is that why they invented fire? Is that why they invented fire so we could all sit around a barbie? Yep. We could, that's, so we could indulge in a bit of aromatherapy, really. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And why can you can you tell me why the barbecue has such a uh, uniquely Australian affinity? We, you, when I hear barbecue, I immediately assume it's a, it's an Australian kind of tradition, as opposed to. Well, the bad worldwide. news is it's not really, but we think it Thank is. Thank Mark Thompson for coming in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been great. There's his book. Uh, Where did it come from? England? No, America. No, America. America. It's an American thing. Right. But, yeah, yeah, but we improved it. Hey, but before, before the barbecue, we had the chalk picnic. The chalk picnic? Yeah, that's, that's something I reckon we should bring back. The chalk picnic. The chalk picnic. So yeah. what's that? You just chop the barbecue before the Americans <laughs> turned up. <laughs> right, and when did we make the leap from the chalk picnic to the barbecue? Ooh, about man? 1949. About 1949? Yeah. Post-war. We, Women's Day announced that. Men should now barbecue. Can I ask, well, really. why is that? Because it's like, if cooking's done indoors, it's assumed uh, the women's terrain, but as soon as we move it outdoors, it's, I'll handle that. Yep. The we... meat is now outdoors. <laughs> I will assume control of all the cooking implements. Yep. Well, what, what, what's the deal there? Uh, what, what, it's a, it's a, it's a genetic happen? memory thing. It just sort of kicks in there, you know. If it wells up from the distant past, you know, mm. those you know, millions of years of hanging around the campfire poking bits of burnt flesh, it all just comes back in a flood. <laughs> Before you know it, you can't stop yourself. So do you think, do you, when you're barbecuing, is it a tribal kind of thing? Are you... Um... I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so does everyone here? Oh, yeah, you're not wrong. I'm, I'm looking around, this, the around these two couches <laughs> and everyone here looks like they enjoy a good barbecue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I like I can smorgasbord say. too. Are they Australian? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's sort of. Yeah. That's a Sydney thing. That's a Sydney yeah. thing. <laughs> I, like, uh, I like baked potato. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you like baked potato? <laughs> baked potato with prawns. <laughs> oh, I say, that's uh, sounding almost gourmet. I might just, I might just say Judith had a good one. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> she was lucky. <laughs> Look, Mark, in his this book, which is a sensational book, you must get it. Uh, also, improvises quite a great deal when, like, say you feel the need to have a barbie, but mm. uh, you know, there's no barbecues galore open. Mark has, has established a unique way of improvising on the spot and early this week, Mark and myself hit the town uh, with some uncooked meat and nothing to cook it in and uh, here's what happened. Have a look. Look, let's go and find a hubcap. That's probably the best bet. A hubcap? Hubcap, yeah, a little kind of German wok. Volkswagen hubcap, you can't beat it. Alright. Just keep your, you know, your, your senses open for a barbecue opportunity, you know, just be aware of something that might just manifest itself. Ah, look at that. Pristine condition there. <laughs> Let's have a look in here just to see if there's anything. Ooh, I don't know. Hang on. Are you all right? We'll get help. <laughs> don't move. We'll have you out in a minute. We'll go and cook some chops. We'll be back later. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
<laughs> Thank the drawing board, Mick. Thank God you put that out. <laughs> Hang on, mate. Not that one. Oh, what's that? That's got an ad for a barbecue shop. <laughs> What are you doing? We're, we're having a barbie, Mick. <laughs> what, you, what you got there, Mick? Well, I've strapped some stakes to the soles of my feet. Ah, oh, beautiful. And I'm going to fire walk on the hot coals. <laughs> 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 How do you like it? Oh, well done. Well done. You didn't say that. <laughs> oh. Dinner's ready. So what are we doing now, Mark? Those, um hubcaps that we picked up earlier on. We've used a, a lot more of that uh, innovative barbecue design here and um, used an old cake rack as a uh, grilling surface, you know. Mm -hmm. Which you found in that dump master. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get that funny. <laughs> two fat ladies, rubbish. <laughs> Look at us, two fat bastards. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> to two fat bastards. <laughs> What's in the secret uh, marinade? Well, you don't tell. Get, get real. You can't tell, oh, why not? Yeah. Is that a barbecuing kind of thing, is it? Yeah, I've got to kill you. <laughs> you have to kill me? <laughs> Put Channel 9 out of their misery. Got <laughs> <laughs> oh, that right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give it a taste. Mmm, mmm. You can taste the hubcap. 1981, I reckon. A 1981, yeah. A Passat, you reckon? Passat, possibly a Passat. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Amazing what you can do when you're resourceful. Now, Mark, I want to go through some of the pictures of sure. barbecues yep. that you have in this book because uh, there's some amazing designs in here and we, we had a flip through during yeah. the week and picked out some of our mm -hmm. favourites. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at this one here. That's a, <laughs> that is a barbecue. And a lawnmower. And it's kind of like, the, you know, the, the carrot in front of the, the horse, isn't it? It's like, mmm, hungry. <laughs> or for a serial killer like, say, Jeffrey Dahmer, your, your one-stop shop. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good design. Have a look at this one here. That, what is that, Mark? That's, that's a solar barbecue. That's a solar now, barbecue. Now, 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 one of the design features there, you can actually take your old wine casks and put them inside your beach umbrella. And hey presto, instant barbecue. Mm. So you can also pick up SBS on that too. <laughs> right? You know, it'd be great if you could beam that to like life forms in other galaxies, <laughs> because the first thing they'd hear would be, come over, we're having a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> we're cooking some meat. Have a look at this one here, this is a good one. That's the, oh, titanic, the titanic barbecue. And you know what you do when you're cooking with that? No, what? You stand there going, I'm king of the chops! <laughs> <laughs> I'm king of the chops! Top of the food chain, top of the food chain, that's what you are. And uh, I believe it's fueled entirely by Celine Dion CDs. <laughs> which, <laughs> which is excellent. <laughs> Let's have them well done, please. <laughs> burn, baby, burn! <laughs> All right, have a look at this one here. This is great, this one. Have a look at this. This is uh, the guitar Oh. Yeah. Is that Tommy Emmanuel? <laughs> <laughs> he just turns up every time the barbie's on and starts playing. I, uh, apparently, I reckon he's wrong using tongs there. He should yeah. be using a giant plectrum. <laughs> I'll, I'll let him know. He'll be in that, that like, like a shot. He'll love that. All yeah. right. Let's have a look at this one right here. That, what is that, Mark? That's Barbecue Island. That's one of my, <laughs> that's one of my absolute favourites. I love that. That's Barbecue Island. That's it's right. an island that that man built in his dam yep. and kept, and he drives there to barbecue. The only thing he doesn't do, I reckon, he, you need like Ricardo Montalban there going, welcome to Barbecue Island. <laughs> the flame, the flame. <laughs> the flame. In fact, uh, Mark, because you've come in today, we actually had your t-shirt made up. And it's quite a simple one here, and it just goes, I got wrecked on Barbecue Island. <laughs> oh, there you go, mate. Oh, you can take oh, that right. one with you. There weren't, there weren't many trees left on Barbecue Island, I know. <laughs> just, just one, yeah, really. Just one. Just one, and here's a good one too. Have a look at this one here. That is the Dragon Whoa. Barbecue. The Dragon. Yeah, that's that, a humdinger, that that's one. That's a humdinger. Now, I'm not sure, but I, I think that's where they cremated Mark Hunter. <laughs> oh, oh, that's low. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, 
Because I'm a ho. I've turned the room. <laughs> it was such a nice segment. It was about barbecues in Australia, and we were all having fun, oh, and I ruined no. it. I've actually got a barbecue. <laughs> I've actually got a barbecue shaper like Todd Hunter, the bass player. Oh, I, I, that's Weber, is poor it? taste. <laughs> He's ruined it. Sorry, Art. I love so, dragons. Yeah, are you winding me up because we're out of time or because it's just this has descended? <laughs> yeah, downhill, mate. All right, look, sorry about that. I apologise, but that was poor taste. Yeah. But what the hey, it's live and who cares? Hey, um, <laughs> we, we went out again, didn't we? Because yep. again, yep. it's one of the most resourceful things we look, do. Look, Mick, I was really pleased. That you wanted me to turn you into a lean, mean barbecuing machine, and That's we had right. a good crack at it, I reckon. We did. We went out, check us out, make and do with what we got. That is a beautiful barbecue plate, potentially beautiful, if a little dangerous barbecue. Oh, look, there's another fantastic one. Look at that. Look at what that. What the hell's that? What are you yeah. talking about? How's that a barbecue? Just put on a few bricks. No worries. <laughs> put on a few bricks. Yeah, and look, the oh. great pattern you get on it. Fantastic. Right, look at this one over here. We'll be able to have oh, guests around. Wow, that's fantastic. Well done, Mick. <laughs> that's a great discovery. Rope off the area. Yeah. Grab the scallops, everyone. So, what's the story here, Mick? Quite simple, Mark. Here's what we do. We wait till one of those bastards takes off, then we follow them all the way, and when we get to the fire, we throw in a couple of these bags. <laughs> like Look, Mick, you're well on the way to being a barbecue genius, I've got to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you up to here, Mark? Well, Mick, this is your economy model uh, backyard barbecue here. Uh, it's, uh, it's your home iron, turned upside down, stuck between a couple of bricks. Do we need Fabulon? Fabulon, no, it's, it's got one of those uh, Teflon things on it already, you know. This, this predates the uh, uh, Pritikin rubbish, you know. <laughs> yeah, there we go, it's sizzling. Yeah. And look, it's taken the creases out. <laughs> well, what have we got in the way of garnishes here? Whew, it's not easy. Hey, grab those pair of pants behind you, they need an iron. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I learnt from all those TV cooking, you know. All of a sudden, you're friggin' bush tucker man. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there's the cover of your next cookbook. <laughs> you keep uh, working on yep, this one, okay. and yeah. I'll go see how how my chops are doing. You, oh, good to see. Oh, you have the yeah, main bit of initiative. I'd love to see that. Barbecue yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, I'm just going to okay. go keep up, keep up, keep up. Hang on a sec. Let's have to see how this is going. So what are you up to in there, Mick? Ah, oh, Mark, it's a little trick I learnt way back when. Check it out. I'm cooking the steaks on the electric blanket, but it shouldn't take long because I've turned it up to three. <laughs> you idiot, Mick. You idiot. Uh, Mark, how do you like your steaks? Uh, well done, of course. Damn. We could be here for a while. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Great thanks for, thanks yeah. for spending a, a couple of days with yeah. us during the week and coming on the show. There's the book again. Uh, you want to get onto that. We only showed you six pictures from that book, but they're all, they're all they're all pretty fascinating, and it's great subject matter. Thank you very much, and we'll be back with more right after this. See you in a second. Thank you, Throw your barbecue book on it. <laughs> Light it. It's close as we're going to a barbie today. I'm reckoning. So I've gone back into the room, and she's gone, disappeared. <laughs> and coiled round her chair is a complete human skin. <laughs> oh, drink up, girls, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> But I find Bob strangely attractive. Yeah. <laughs> How long did you leave that costume on for, Bob? <laughs> it's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on with the Pendos. Joyce on the couch. Yeah, that right. means it's time for sport. How are you, Pendo? Very Make well. him welcome. Yeah. 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 I hate to. Uh, 
I hate to drop a cash phrase, but it has been a big week huge, for sport. Huge, huge. Yeah. With the World Swimming titles, Channel 9 have been covering it beautifully all week. They and, have uh, indeed. Good performance from all the Australians. Was that as good as they expected? Have we done better or worse? I think, I think they were probably hoping for something as, as strong as what it's been. So I yeah. think that Don Talbot would be pretty happy with all that. What's the deal with a fast pool? I'm Don't sorry to harp, but how does it fast? Yeah, they've sort of said a lot of things to do with the design and the water flow and what's yeah. actually in the water. Is but, it on uh, a slope? Well, could be. <laughs> <laughs> or it's shorter. Uh, uh, Two metres shorter, uh, maybe. Shorter. Know. You know, at home, yeah. I've got a fast bath. <laughs> yeah, I'm just lying around. There's something about it. It's just faster. <laughs> <laughs> something to do with the design, I'm imagining. Yes. So that's been great. What about athletics? Yeah, athletics, yeah. Well, Kathy Freeman successfully defended her uh, world championship. Ah, she, she's great a effort. cracker. She is like, that's just amazing. I stayed up great and watched win. that. Good great on, win good just on the line. And then Michael Johnson broke an 11-year record. Is he a machine? Or yes, what? that Butch uh, Reynolds had held. Yeah. And that's uh, 11 times out of the top 15 in the 400 that he now holds. And he got the world record at last. So. And, and did the guy, did Green, is he the first? to get the, the 100, 200 double at Spot the, on, Mick, the yes. World, World so, yeah. Last night, uh, Maurice, Maurice Green, who's mm. uh, the man of the moment, the 100 and the 200, mm. managed to win both those. So. Uh, uh, well, that means the, the Australian cricket team, of course, in action at Sri Lanka this, uh, this week. They've, they've gone, gone nuts. Game. They've gone mad. They're winning everything, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they hadn't had no match practice. Mm. Straight in the net, straight in the first game, they've yeah. been cleaning them up. So. Because they're normally slow starters, too, in the one-day yeah. series, aren't they? They normally just, just scrape into the finals yeah. and then play their best stuff. Andrew Simmons, you mentioned to me, uh, Simon, yeah, you've been Simon. very impressed with him. Absolutely. And, uh, he's come into the team and made some runs. And Wasn't he going to go to England at one stage? Very good point. A couple of years ago, he was a fellow that I think he's, his parents have a British and he might have been born there but lived in Queensland all his life and the, the English tried to get him to play for them a couple of years ago. He said, no, I'll do my time, be patient, and hopefully get into the Australian well, team. that's it's... his loss. No, oh, really? <laughs> Mate, really? you just lost to New Zealand. You lost yes. a test series to Fresh. New Zealand. I that's mean... because the Queen is an opening call. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, we're at the top end of the table and you're down the other end. We give him to you, mate. We give him to you. But where Jeez. I have been, Mick, is up the Winter Extreme Games. Now, that's oh. why you weren't on the show last week. You, you're up at Perisher. Magnificent. Perisher Blue uh, from Saturday through to Wednesday. Mm. Uh, the Summer Extreme Games have been running surface the last couple of years and the Winter Extreme Games, something's going to catch on as well. Mm. And also doubled as the Australian snowboarding titles up there. Correct. But uh, amazing conditions and an amazing resort up there at Perisher. It was very well run. Snowy, mm. was it? Oh, what a bit of snow. <laughs> <laughs> bit of snow? Bit of snow? One thing I couldn't work because it was a maze. It was not on a cloud in the sky and we're all standing around in t-shirts. Oh, Jesus, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Fire, but, uh, <laughs> is it a fast slope? It was a very fast slope. Fa fast slope, according to everyone involved. But uh, someone's not taking the sports seri uh, segment seriously. <laughs> yes, come on. But uh, really good up there, Jonas Emery, a young fellow that uh, managed to win the half pipe in the big air. Yeah. Over here to learn English, basically. Thought he'd go up and compete in a couple of things from Switzerland. He cleaned up, won a couple of awards. The Australians did well, and I think they're slowly catching up. Uh, Jason Onley, who was on the panel a while ago, he won the uh, the Kamikaze downhill and. Uh, Stan Elves' daughter, Sheridan Elves, up there in her first professional event and finished third in the in the half pipe and uh, and she, she's one to watch too for the Winter Olympics as well. Beautiful. But I'll put together a bit of a package, Mick. Oh, on the excellent. Extreme game. So some right. absolute madness up there and some great things to have a look at. So we're gonna have a look at what happened up at Perisher Blue at the Extreme Games this week, and uh, here we go. Another word for kamikaze, it's got to be suicide. And the half pot saw some real action. After the event, he couldn't keep them off the half pipe. Oh. 
Even the bus driver was game. And the craziest event would have to be the mass downhill mountain bike. I'm running a pretty primitive sort of machine and uh, I don't know, no brakes hitting that jump. I went skyward, I went past Jupiter, I went past Mars, I went past every planet, even those new ones they found, eh? So, 30 foot in the air, heading face first into hard packed snow. And what's he thinking about? I was thinking, am I going to have rice pudding again at Mum's? <laughs> she makes a ripper. Uh, and, <laughs> that's a, there's a there's a bloke who loves his rice pudding. <laughs> tell you what, that's outrageous. They had spikes in their tyres. It's one of the first times they've done this mountain biking on the snow. So most of the guys are mountain bikers, but uh, absolute craziness. Everyone might be concerned about that large cr last crash there with Nigel, and mm. we actually got him with us here tonight. I brought him in, Mick. Hello. Nigel's there over, he here. Is over there, and uh, we thought we'd present him with some, uh, <laughs> with, with some rice pudding, seeing that he made it through the nasty grass. <laughs> That's a good call. Nigel, what injuries have you got there? Any injuries at all? Yeah, I've, I've broken um, a couple of bones in the left foot. Uh, the other one's not so good. The ribs are OK. And this is not rice pudding, this is rice cream, this is shit. <laughs> But while you're there, we've set up a ramp. Would you mind jumping 12 trash cans for us in your wheelchair? Come on! Oh, yeah! And go nuts! Even in a wheelchair, you can't stop him. Oh! That's extreme! That's extreme! That's extreme. Oh, On that note, Pendo, thanks for coming in. Go pick up your mate. Let someone grab him. He's fallen out of a wheelchair. And we'll be back in just a second. Don't go away. Now, the other crucial and often overlooked aspect of the game of golf is swearing. When you hit a bad shot, that's the perfect time to open up with some fruity language. Watch. <clears throat> Shit. <laughs> oh, mother. <laughs> Oh shit, pissed. <laughs> See, I've got it off my chest. That's good golf. Now, the other important thing at address to remember, especially if you're a smoker, is it's fine to have the cigarette in your mouth while you have a bit of a practice swing, while you're getting your grip, and while you're looking down the barrel of the next shot. But watch what happens as I step over the ball. Mm mm mm. <laughs> Smoke in my eyes. Smoke in my eyes. So that was wrong. What I have to do when I get to this point is go... <laughs> now I'm ready to play golf. It's just like the doctor. <laughs> I'm putting some plates and I'm making coffee for you, darling. Oh, no, no, that's okay. No coffee's coffee? fine. No, oh, just okay. a bit good. Oh, what happened here? Oh, my God! <laughs> the bubble is coming down the Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? Hi, 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 what are You have plenty of black hair. <laughs> Would you just do me the courtesy of telling me what you and your friends are doing here? <laughs>